Tonight on the Mike Tomlin Show, Coach looks ahead to tomorrow's matchup with the high-powered Falcons. We get a preview. Wide receiver Ryan Switzer tells us how he couldn't wait to come to Pittsburgh. And linebacker Tyler Matakavich puts on his chef hat. All of that and so much more as the Mike Tomlin Show starts right now. Here we go. This pass is caught and that's a touchdown. That's the way to work. Come on. He's hit that sack. The Steelers win the football game. Let's go. Come get it. You know what it is. This one is in the history books. Here we go. The Mike Tomlin Show is presented by 84 Lumber. Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of the Mike Tomlin Show. I'm Missy Matthews. We spent a good deal of time last week talking about two offenses poised to have big days at Heinz Field. The word shootout was used frequently prior to the Steelers and Ravens matchup. The result was far from that prediction, however. It may have been the stifling Ravens defense that was the surprise of the game, keeping the Steelers offense in check for the entire second half. Pittsburgh was forced to punt on their first four drives and were held to just 47 yards and no points after halftime. Let's send it over to Bob Pompiani, who's with Coach Tomlin, to talk about last week's loss. All right, Missy, thanks very much. Time to look ahead, but also before we do that, take a look back at what happened in home game number two. Coach Mike Tomlin is here, and 0-2 is just something that we don't usually see from the Steelers at home. If you had to pinpoint what went wrong in that game last week against Baltimore, where would you start? Two very specific things. Um, we didn't get off to the type of start that we'd like to. Obviously, starts don't define you. We worked our way back from that start, and we went in at halftime of a tie ball game. But you don't like to start games like that. It sets a climate, if you will. Uh, we were playing catch up because of it. In the second half of the game, it boiled down to possession downs. We, we didn't win enough on offense. Uh, we didn't win enough on defense. They controlled possession downs and thus field position and kind of how the game unfolded. Um, we kept them out of the end zone largely, but that field position element, dic element dictated by the winning of possession downs was the story in the game in the second half. Scoring is up, a lot of big plays. You guys have been victimized by that. How do you change that, Coach? How do you, how do you stop you know, the 20 plus plays from happening? You know, for us, it is twofold. Um, it is tight coverage, but it's also the pressure that we're able to put the quarterback under and the, and, and the pressure that we're able to create in the pocket. And um, so we've been growing in all areas, in both areas. It needs to continue. Um, but I imagine the same could be said for the National Football League when you look at these explosion plays. And uh, we all globally have to find ways to apply pressure to the quarterback while playing within the rules uh, of today's NFL. And um, that's been challenging. We can't let that sting our, our desire to get after them. Uh, we can't let that um, quell our physicality. Are you blitzing as much as you would like? Um, we're capable of blitzing more, um, and we will, because we gotta, we got to create that havoc in both places. We need tight coverage on the back end. We need more duress in that pocket. Let's talk about the defensive line. You guys have some big guys up there who have put together some nice seasons. This year, it doesn't seem like the same amount of pressure engineered by those guys alone is there at this point. You know, sometimes it has to do with game circumstances, getting an opportunity to rush. You get people one-dimensional when you're up on people. We haven't been up on people a lot through this portion of the season. So, you know, when you're talking about judging them in that way, I think particularly at this early stage, I think that's an element of it. We need to get up on some people, get them in those predictable, um, you know, circumstances, and then we'll see what that rush is about. Offensively, uh, Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown don't, don't seem to be on the same page. Now, you can look at body language like we do or, or watch what happens there. Is there some sort of problem that needs to be worked out there in terms of, you know, receiver, quarterback on the same page? You know, they're on the same page. I think they have experienced a level of frustration um, and that's born out of not winning, <laughs> you know. Um, being the competitors that they are, there's certain frustrations with not being able to win and move the ball fluidly in the manner which we like. Um, people are doing some unique things to try to minimize that combination and getting accustomed to some of those things that are happening to us in 2018 and the, the infusion of other eligibles in that, that equation. Uh, we'll find our rhythm with that group, man. They're two talented players, two driven players. Uh, it's going to be tough to keep a lid on that, on that tandem. It has been uh, the years I've been with them. And we would expect maybe a breakout this week against Atlanta, a team that's been banged up a little bit defensively, but also a team that can score some points. 
Uh, we'll talk about the Falcons when we come back. They're coming to Heinz Field on Sunday. That's the next opponent. Missy, back to you. Thanks, Bob. And much like the blanket coverage that Antonio Brown has been faced with, Falcons wide receiver Julio Jones can expect similar treatment tomorrow to make sure he doesn't reach the end zone for the first time this season. Up next, he had a big day at Heinz Field last week against the Ravens, but wide receiver Ryan Switzer also had a big day at Heinz Field back in 2005. We had to dig deep for this video. At halftime, they brought all the uh, participants out on the field to throw a pass. Um, so it's How'd pretty... you do? Can't remember. <laughs> The Steelers' official mobile app brings your game day experience to a whole new level. The app features a new game center full of stats, drive charts, and video highlights. Following the game, watch live press conferences and video interviews. Download the Steelers' official mobile app for free today. I think you know, we, we get caught up a lot in our daily routine and our weekly week schedule, and uh, it's cool to just spend some time with them, play some games, uh, make some new friends. Oh. It's more than just a game, and that we impact the community more than just from football. So just being able to come here and show them that they have our support, they have our prayers, uh, they have our love, it's amazing. So just, just so that they know that it's more than football. Dealt from the Cowboys, second-year wide receiver Ryan Switzer spent his offseason with his new team, the Oakland Raiders. Through OTAs, minicamp, and training camp, he learned their playbook, got to know his teammates, and started his new life in the Bay Area. During the last week of the preseason, Switzer was pulled out of a team meeting only to be told he was being traded to the Steelers. Coach Tomlin uses the analogy of a moving train when talking about joining a squad already prepped for the regular season. It's not an easy task, but after leading the team in receptions last week against the Ravens, Switzer's progress is evident. I sat down with the West Virginia native to get a better idea of how he's jumped on to this moving train. First and goal at the one, the pass is gonna be caught. Ryan Switzer inside the pylon left side for the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. You had Justin Evans who's the the free safety trying to cover him in man coverage, and that wasn't going to happen. For Ryan Switzer, his first touchdown is a Pittsburgh Steeler. Ryan, just for maybe people who aren't aware, tell us where you grew up. Uh, I'm from Charleston, West Virginia. You were actually here at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex in the indoor for the punt, pass, and kick competition. Do you remember taking part in that? Yeah, I remember bits and pieces of it. Um, I mean, that was a pretty big deal, right? At the time, it, it was uh, it was a big deal. It was certainly something that uh, I enjoyed. Um, but being here and um, you know competing, and then actually getting to go, I think they were playing New England. Um, we were at the game, and then on, at halftime, they brought all the uh, participants out on the field to throw a pass. Um, so it was how'd pretty, you do? Can't remember. <laughs> I would assume I did okay, but can't remember. Has it been a whirlwind? Is that a fair word to use? Just how you've gone from Dallas to Oakland and now here in Pittsburgh? Yeah, it's, it, that's, a, that's a very fair word to use. Um, obviously, you, you never know how your, your path is going to go in the NFL. And, and certainly being drafted last year to Dallas, I didn't expect everything that, that happened to go down. But I was, I was ecstatic to come here and uh, be back on the East Coast, be back um, to a town and to a city that I'm familiar with. and. Uh, yeah, I was, I was really hyped up. In terms of the offense, is that maybe the harder part of your job to get on that moving train with? Um, I wouldn't say harder. It's a little bit, it was a little bit more challenging early on because I didn't have the install days in the summer or in training camp. You know, these guys were getting ready for a season. So I kind of had to do um, a lot. I mean, I did have to do a lot of studying on my own and, you know, the trust factor is is uh, very important in terms of um, you know creating a role for yourself offensively, and it's hard to create tr um, you know trust in a short amount of time. But 
How how do you earn a quarterback's trust? I guess what's something that you can do to show him, hey, I'm going to be ready for you if you need me in a game. Yeah, I mean it's right. It's it's hard right now. You're playing with a, a 15 uh, year vet, someone who's going into the Hall of Fame, someone who's got a Super Bowl ring, who's seen a plethora of receivers. So the, the experience of proving him right's got to be there. And um, you know, I, I enjoy playing with him. Um, very, very smart guy. He, he, he sees the field so well and, um, you know, he distributes the ball to a, a, a lot of different guys. And, and with Ben, uh, I've noticed in, in the, the short time that I've been here, um, everyone has a chance to get it no matter, no matter the play. There's plenty more coming up on the Mike Tomlin Show. Up next, Coach Tomlin discusses the emergence of Falcons rookie wide receiver Calvin Ridley, a new favorite target of former NFL MVP Matt Ryan. Don't go anywhere. Heinz Field, baby, let's go. This fall, we're hosting a few get-togethers at Heinz Field. Touchdown, Antonio Brown. How did he do that? Here's a big rush, and that is Cam Hayward with yet another. Come on by and join 68,000 of your closest friends. Touchdown, Juju Smith, Schuster. The Steelers win the football game, and what a game. For ticket information, visit Steelers.com. Tomlin Show is presented by 84 Lumber. There's no sugarcoating a 1-2-1 one, one start for the Steelers. It's certainly stumbling out of the block, but we're only a quarter of the way through the season with a lot of football left to play. The 1-3 Atlanta Falcons find themselves in a similar situation. There's no shortage of offense. Quarterback Matt Ryan, who was the NFL MVP just two seasons ago, is currently on pace to have a career year. It's the defense, however, that's riddled with injuries and allowing over 30 points per game. Both teams enter Hinesfield tomorrow with slow starts to the season, but only one team will begin to turn it around by late afternoon. Let's send it back over to Bob and Coach to talk about getting the season back on track. All right, Missy, thanks. It's Atlanta, a team that uh, went to the Super Bowl and had one. Everyone thought one until the very end. Crazy Super Bowl was a couple of years ago. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you just about, before we get into them, when you're in a position where you start slowly, uh, you've done this before times which you've rebounded and turned a negative start into a positive finish. What's the key in your estimation? You know, the key is to, to, to stay singularly focused on what's important, and those are the the, the game or the opportunity that lies ahead. You can waste a lot of time uh, dwelling on opportunities missed. Um, you look at what produced those opportunities missed because you, you want to be able to stop trends. You want to be able to turn negative into good. But if we can stay singularly focused this week on this game and do that process repeatedly over the course of a number of weeks, uh, we'll chip away at our current position. Uh, we're one, two, and one. We're a game and a half off the pace in the AFC North uh, with 12 games to go. Uh, that's not that's not very far back, to be quite honest with you, particularly with the number of head-to-heads. So we talk about that reality, but at the end of the day, it's about that singular focus. It's about that preparation and then ultimately that play in that stadium that awaits us this weekend. One thing that's very good about watching the NFL, there's a lot of parity. I mean, there are teams you never know how it's going to work. Atlanta was a team predicted by many to be at the end of the year in the big game, and they're 1-3. They've had injuries, but they are dangerous. Talk about their offense 
and specifically Calvin Ridley, who's emerged as really a playmaker. Julio Jones doesn't even have a touchdown yet, which is a little surprising. You know, you, you mentioned about Ben and, and Antonio, and you know, you could look at Matty Ice and, and Julio and talk about the productions and the opportunities that young guys like Ridley get. First rounder from Alabama, um, he's new to the National Football League, new to them, and over the course of the first month of the season, it's interesting to see how people get familiar with how they're utilizing him. He's got six touchdowns, I think, over the course of the first four games. Um, Julio Jones has got zero. It doesn't mean that he's more significant than Julio. It just means that at this point in the season, Julio has had a lot of attention and he's taken uh, advantage of that lack of attention. Uh, we got to find a way to smooth that out, uh, minimize some of the splash that he's making, while at the same time respecting the big play capabilities of, of the Julio Jones, Matt Ryan combination. What about their defense? They've had some injuries to it. Uh, when you're looking at them with your uh, offense that is capable of quick strikes, what do you see matchup-wise there? You know, they've gone through some, some issues defensively, and it's really down the middle. Um, Jones at the linebacker level, Neal um, and Allen at the safety level, all three are down. And so there's ramifications of that from a communication standpoint, particularly when you get into sub-package football. You see a lot of people in their sub-package football I think they're working to find their traction in terms of division of labor, the utilization of people, in a similar way that we are when you're dealing with injury, uh, particularly at this portion of the season. It's probably limited some of the things that they're doing schematically. Um, but for us, it's about the protection of, of, of the ball, possessing the football. And they got a couple of edge rushers, man, that really specialize in getting after the passer and creating havoc. And, and that's how they get the ball. Uh, Tack McKinley is an edge guy, uh, first rounder. They took out of UCLA a couple years ago. And Vic Beasley is another one that they took out of, out of Clemson. Those guys set the pace up front. Um, talented edge people, four-man rush group, uh, really do a good job of getting after the quarterback. Um, we got to protect Ben. We got to really do a good job on the edges. We got to maintain possession of the ball if we do. Then it's about us winning possession downs and functioning in a manner in which we like to. Should be a fascinating game. The Falcons coming to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Both teams in need of a win. We'll have more coming up with Coach Tomlin in a little bit. Missy, back over to you. Thanks, Bob. In case you were wondering, the last time the Steelers played the Falcons was back in 2014, and Pittsburgh won 27 to 20. Right after the break, we go under the Friday night lights and linebacker Tyler Matakavich goes under the fluorescent lights in the concession stand. See what this is all about? It's like delicious. The league considers rule changes annually. We want to keep the game competitively fair and we just want to make the game as safe as we can make it. Recently, we expanded the horse collar tackle rule to not only include inside the collar, but outside the collar guys were being injured, so we expanded that rule. You talk to the players about why the rule is being changed, but then you also talk to your coaches about how it might change our instruction. You know, the game is evolving, and it's evolving for the better. The preseason is in the rearview mirror, and for fans, that brings a bit of anxiety. You know, what do we have? Well, remember the old Andy Williams Christmas song, it's the most wonderful day of the year. That's that's the opening day of the NFL regular season. Winning week one, especially at home, has huge, has huge implications. Show what they did for the rest of the day. He's back, has time, throws the out far side. I need to that. The Steelers have it. Jordan Palomino jumped in front of the would-be receiver, and the Steelers are back in business. Troy does a great job of baiting young quarterbacks. You know, Ryan in his third year, still not at that point where uh, he's Matty Ice yet. In overtime, the Steelers' first possession of the extra session. And the give off the right side. Bevin Hall, he breaks it through. He's at the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. And he scores a touchdown. And this game is over. Thank you. That's how you finish again. There truly is something magical about Friday night football in Western Pennsylvania during the fall. The cool bite in the air, echoes of the marching band, even the aroma of the concession stand food always brings me back to my high school days. Every Steelers player has a soft spot for their high school memories on the field, 
So it's no surprise that a few of them jumped at the chance to head out with our film crew for a few Friday nights this year to take in that action. As part of the Steelers High School Football Showcase, fans have the opportunity to vote for the game of the week and sometimes a player tags along to join in on the fun. You see that crane up out here? Friday night, man, you can't beat it. And sometimes to be put to work. You get a healthy it? scoop of mashed potatoes. A healthy scoop. healthy scoop? What's a healthy scoop? A little bit more. Like I was gonna say, my grandma would fill this whole oh, thing yeah, up. You know how grandmas are. All right, what do we need? Then you're going to take... Oh, man. Piece of knife to get the scissors. Oh, the scissors? You cut your chicken up into your... I'm vegetables. literally cutting it. You're cutting it. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. What's the... What's the perfect size? Is Probably that too like big? That. Is no, that too big? just want a little, okay. little okay. mouthful. I, I want this to be perfect. All together. Oh. Okay, okay. So you got to get, the chicken. Gotta get the chicken. Got to get the chicken. Okay, okay. A little thing of corn. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. I see what we're doing here. I see what we're doing. This is like a little Thanksgiving, huh? All year round, all year round. Okay. Yourself some gravy. Okay, okay. Is this house made? Is that the spe secret sauce yeah, here? Unfortunately, secret that's sauce. We're <laughs> <laughs> kind of busy. I did make the mashed potatoes though. Oh, see that? Look at that. Homemade mashed potatoes. <laughs> then last thing is cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese. Oh man, gotta gotta get. Let me get you a fork. Sprinkle just the right amount. There we go. First bite. Uh, See what this is all about. It's like delicious. And you can find more great high school football coverage by going to Steelers.com slash Steelers Showcase. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thanks so much for joining us for this edition of the Mike Tomlin Show presented by 84 Lumber. As always, before we say goodnight, let's get some final thoughts from Coach Tomlin. All right, Missy, football is all weekend long around here in Western Pennsylvania, as you know, uh, not just Sunday, Saturday for college, but Friday nights. And the Steelers have heavily invested in the community, they send players out each and every Friday to go to various games. We saw Tyler Matakavich last week. But what makes that special, do you think, in this area? It's almost like Texas and Florida, too. It's a very big business. You know, it's community. It's, it's camaraderie. I get an opportunity to participate in it because my sons play and to see the high school communities, to see the neighborhood communities rally around a group of young people that are competing in the game that they love, that we all love, and to, to be able to support them, I, I think is a special thing. Um, I think our players connect with that. I think they all obviously love the game, but they all have these experiences from being in those environments uh, that are pure. Uh, they're some of the best memories that they'll all, they'll ever have involving the game. and so. Our guys, uh, whether it's formally in the ways that Tyler are participating or whether it's informally, uh, they get out in the community and sharing that as well on Friday nights, watching kids play, man. It's a beautiful thing. It's a part of American culture. It is always fun on Friday nights, and we have another one coming up next Friday. Steeler players, Josh Dobbs has been there, many others, and we'll continue to do this throughout the course of the season. Coach Mike Tomlin, thanks and good luck. Thank you. All right, that's the Mike Tomlin Show. For Missy Matthews and Coach T, I'm Bob Pompiani. Thanks for joining us. We'll do it again next Saturday night right here on KDK. Stick around. We have plenty of football coverage all weekend long. And have a good weekend, everyone. We'll see you next week.